Welcome friends. Today we're going to make chicken stock. My friend Jamie was in and showed us how to break down a chicken. So I'm left with these three chicken carcasses and I thought I'd make stock with them because it's always a great idea to use the entire animal. Now chicken stock. Chicken stock is one of those things that I'm sure all experienced cooks have a way that they do it. This is the way that they always do it and it must be done this way because it is the only way, it is the right way, it is the best way. And that's great. That is great. If you are happy with the way you're making chicken stock, you should continue to do it that way. I was like that too. Completely like that. And then probably uh, 15 years ago, I was shooting a French chef in an Italian restaurant in Hong Kong. Um, we were shooting him throughout his day, showing the different things that he would prepare during the day. And one of the things he made was chicken stock, and I was completely blown away by his method. I spent a lot of time asking him questions about what he was doing and why he was doing it, and it all made sense. And I came home and I tried it this way, and I thought this is absolutely fantastic. Um, this is the way I should be making stock. Uh, but I don't always do it this way. There are times where I slip back into my old habit, and then I think to myself, um, why didn't I use that method I learned in Hong Kong? Uh, and then a few years later, I read the Michael Ruhlman book called Ratios, and in his book, he delineates pretty much this method for making chicken stock. So, it is a really good way to make it. Now, I've got three carcasses here. They weigh about two and a half kilos. So you're going to use a ratio of two to three by weight. Two parts chicken, three parts water. And so I've got two and a half kilos of chicken, which means I'm going to use 3.75 liters of water, which is 3.75 kilos of water. If you're using pounds, you would do exactly the same thing. However many pounds, however many pounds, you can figure that out. Now, I'm going to take the chickens. Um, you can cut the chickens up if you want. I pulled the neck off of this one just to make sure that they fit in the pot properly um, so that I can cover them with water. Uh, let's just see how they go in. And jam that one in. This one goes in too. And this is just some trim of skin and the wing tips. So those go into the pot. Now we pour the water in. Now, as I'm pouring in the second amount of water, it's just going to cover. Now, if the water doesn't cover the chicken bones, you can break up the carcasses a little bit more, break them down so that the water will cover them. Um, and this, this ratio that I'm talking about is great for an all-purpose stock. If you want a more gelatinous stock or one with more intense flavor, but still being a white stock, you would go one-to-one. -one. For every kilo of chicken bones, you would use one kilo of water. And that will give you uh, something that's a lot more unctuous than what you're going to get here. Although this is going to be packed with flavor anyway. Now I hear you. There's people out there screaming, you should have browned the bones. You should have browned the bones. Um, yes, there are times when I will brown the bones. If I know I need a stock that has a rich, intense flavor that that browning is going to bring. But most of the time, I want a stock that's just going to lift all of the other flavors without sort of pushing its way to the front. And in that case, you don't brown the bones. And because I'm not sure where this stock is going to be used yet, um, I want to keep it as plain and simple as possible with some nice bright flavors um, that aren't going to overpower everything. So that when I pull this out of the freezer later, I can just use it in almost any dish. But if you want to brown them, go ahead. Brown them in the oven and then put them in the pot and follow the rest of this method. So I've got it on the stove top. I've got it on sort of a medium high heat. I want to bring this up to about 200 degrees Fahrenheit quickly. Um, and then I'll skim off any of the proteins that form on the top of the pot. Don't bring it to a boil. You never want this to boil at all. Great, so we've come up to temperature and there's nothing to skim off the top. Now here's where this method differs from everywhere else. Usually you'd throw all the bones in, you'd cover it with water, you'd bring it up to a boil and you'd boil it. And that coagulates proteins and fats and you'd have to skim that stuff off the top. It also gives you a very cloudy stock and there's nothing wrong with a cloudy stock. Um, for certain applications, a cloudy stock is exactly what you want. Think uh, chicken ramen. That is a cloudy, thick, unctuous stock. 
What I'm looking for here is something that's very clear with bright, clean flavors. So I never want to bring it to a boil. I never want to bring it up to a temperature where those proteins are going to jostle around and come together and, and make it cloudy. So the easiest way to do that, of course, is at this point, once I've got it up to temperature, is just to stick it in the oven. Um, I've got the oven at 180 degrees Fahrenheit, which means this is never going to boil. I'm going to stick it in the oven, and I'm going to forget about it for all afternoon. Um, this is a great recipe that you don't have to baby, you don't have to do anything with. Um, you just stick it in the oven and forget about it. And that at 180, 190 degrees Fahrenheit um, is going to keep you at a temperature where it's never going to boil. Oh, you were expecting salt, pepper, and aromatics? Like, you know, onion, celery, maybe a carrot or two? We'll get to that. Um, I'll see you in about four and a half or five hours. Okay. So, four and a half, five hours have gone by. Now, it's not like I've been standing here all day babysitting it. It's been in the oven, it's been okay. Um, I've been able to move on with my day, go out and do all kinds of other things while this just sort of mellows in the oven and gets really nice and fragrant. It's beautiful, the stock is beautiful. It's clear, it smells amazing. And now is the time that we start to add in the aromatics. And just like at the beginning, where you could have browned the bones before you put them into the pot, this is a point where you can sort of build your flavor profile that you want. I'm going to go very classic and very clean in the flavors that I'm adding to this right now, because I don't know where I'm going to use this stock. I'm going to put it in the freezer, and I might pull it out uh, three or four weeks from now and use it in something. And I don't want the flavors to be overpowering. I can adjust them later to where I want them to be. If you know where this stock is going, if you know it's going into a soup, you can start to build your flavors now, of course, and that would be fantastic. So, I'm going to start out with whole peppercorns. I'm not going to crush them, I'm going to put them in whole. I'm putting in a little bit of salt, not too much because, again, I may reduce this stock later in another application and I don't want it to be too salty. So, very little salt. Then I'm going to go with a classic mirepoix of onion, celery, and carrot. Uh, nothing too fancy. You could put in garlic cloves at this point if you wanted. You could put in uh, all kinds of different fragrant vegetables. Um, you could put in tomato paste. Tomato paste would be a fantastic addition to the, to the stock right now. And I'm just gonna put this in, stir it in a little bit, and then it goes back in the oven for another hour and a half or so. Oh, this is going to be fantastic. Okay, back into the oven. And when it's in there, you don't need to worry about stirring it or shaking it around or anything. Just forget about it. Set a timer. Okay, it smells wonderful. Now, we just need to strain it out. So I have a fine mesh strainer and a few pieces of cheesecloth so I can get this as clear as possible. I'm going to pour it into this container. This container is a food safe plastic container that is food safe up to 210 degrees Fahrenheit. This is 190 degrees Fahrenheit so we're safe. Um, and I'm just going to pour this in and try not to spill it everywhere. So we've got a really nice clear broth, smells fantastic. Um, quite a bit of fat on top of the jug here, which is great. The next step is to either get this into the little containers that you're going to use to freeze it, or whatever container you're going to store it in, and then get it chilled as quickly as possible. Uh, you want to get this out of the danger zone. So you can use a uh, bain-marie, a nice bath, whatever it takes to get that temperature down really quickly. Let's just give it a taste. Really nice, clean chicken flavor. That is amazing. And don't forget to mark on the containers what it is and when you filled them, because I always forget how long stuff has been in the freezer, and without those markings, I'd be completely lost. So, thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.